In this video, we're going to be talking about my favorite color grading software plugin and its latest OFX version release of 6.0.0, while also comparing it to the previous version of 5.3.2. And I'll be doing a very, very simple tutorial. What is it you ask? It's the answer. Let's get it. All right, it's official. Dehancer has just released its latest OFX version of 6.0.0. Now, full disclaimer, I am a terrible color grader. I've watched countless tutorials by some of the best color graders on YouTube. I've tried to apply their methods, but every time I tried, I just felt hopeless and lost. It was way too confusing. They're using 10, 15 nodes, it was crazy. Just when I was about to give up and hire somebody to color grade all of my projects, including my latest film, I found Dehancer. What is Dehancer? Dehancer is an OFX plugin that can be used with any video editing software. I personally use DaVinci Resolve but it can be also used with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. What Dehancer basically does, it turns your video footage into that desired filmic look that we're all searching for. It has multiple film stocks and film prints. I personally prefer the Fuji and Kodak film stocks, but the possibilities are endless. Who is Dehancer for? If you're like me and you're not confident in your color grading skills, or you're looking for a more simple workflow, then Dehancer is the program for you. Dehancer is very easy to use. And for the purpose of this video and tutorial, I'll be doing it in DaVinci Resolve. And for DaVinci Resolve, all you need are just two nodes. That's right. How crazy is that? Just two. Let's get started. For all intents and purposes, this tutorial is for DaVinci Resolve users, but I'm sure you could apply similar methods to other video editing softwares like Premiere and Final Cut Pro. Now, the first step is converting your footage to log. It doesn't matter how you do it, but when I shoot, I shoot in Rec. 709 and I convert it into a log image via ACES transform. That's my first node. After that, I add a serial node for Dehancer. I choose my camera profile which is the red Komodo and then the format is IPP2 for the exposure I leave it at zero and for the temperature because this image is very warm I brought it down to minus 30 Point three to give it a cooler, more neutral look. The tint I brought down to minus point nine. D fringe forty seven point seven 
and the defringe radius is at 66.9. Now for the film profile, I usually either go with the Fuji or Kodak. Those are my two favorite film stocks. And then you have a plethora of options within those stocks that you could choose. After I've chosen my camera profile, I tend to bring the grain down on all levels, all the way down to about one or two, depending on your taste. Because when you open Dehancer, the grain is usually set at default, which is really high. Then, I choose the print, which is usually Kodak Andorra glossy paper because it has a very shiny, glossy look that I find aesthetically pleasing. And this look is often used in big budget network television. But if you're looking for something softer or a little bit more retro, you could always change it. The other prints you could do, and we'll go through them, is linear, Cineon film log, Kodak 2383 print film, and my favorite, Kodak Andorra glossy paper. I find that the two most popular prints, or the Kodak 2383 print film, and the Kodak Andorra glossy paper. Now, as you could see, the Kodak Endor glossy paper darkens it a little bit more and gives it more of a, uh, a contemporary, more modern look that's used in all the big budget film and television these days. But if you want something a little bit more soft, you can pick the uh, 2383 print film. And by doing so, that brings the exposure up just a little bit. Now, a little bit of a pro tip, when you're filming, I find it's always important that while you're filming, to expose an extra stop or two. The Kodak Endora glossy paper will typically bring the exposure down, while the Kodak 2383 print film will bring the exposure up a little bit. And you could always go down on the print and manipulate the exposure levels, the tonal contrast, color density, and the saturation. For this one, because the Kodak Endor glossy paper tends to bring the exposure down just a little bit, I raised it up just a tad. The uh, tonal contrast I have at 6.9. The color density I have all the way to 100. And for the saturation I have at 88.1. Now for the color head, these are your main colors that you can manipulate. We have uh, the yellow-blue levels. I have this one because it's more of a uh, warm look to begin with. I wanted to neutralize it just a little bit more and I brought it right towards the blue at 6.9. For the uh, magenta green, I brought it more towards the uh, magenta side at minus 2.3. And for the uh, cyan red, I brought it a little more towards the cyan side at minus 2.3 again. Now, if you click over here, gang, what it does is that it brings all the levels even with each other. For the preserve exposure, I have this at 100. 
and for the impact, I have it at 90. And by clicking enable, you can enable or disable these features. Now film grain, we already discussed. I brought this all the way down to one, but you could uh, bring it to a two or three. If you're going for a little bit more of a retro look, you could bring it up a little more. But I tend to go for more of the uh, modern look. Now for the halation, the source limiter I have at 74.3, the background gain at 80, smoothness at 47.7, local diffusion at 50.5, global diffusion at 39.5, amplify is at a 40, hue 50, and for blue comp, I have it at zero. In impact, I brought it up to about an 80. Now for bloom, I have the highlights at 80. Source limiter at 69.7. Details at 75.3. Diffusion at 70, amplifies at 78.9, save lights 100, saturation 100, and impact at 60. Let's see what this looks like enabled. And for the vignette, you could do this directly in DaVinci Resolve, but I find that doing all the color grading and editing within Dehancer, it's a lot more of a simple, easy workflow. Over here at the vignette, I have exposure at uh, minus 0.250, the size at 50, feather all the way up to 100, aspect ratio is neutral, Let's see what it looks like enabled and disabled. So clearly you could see a difference. For film breath, I have the period at three, exposure at 10, tonal contrast at 10, color at 10, and impact at 10. Let's see what this looks like enabled. Now for the film breath, I'm not a fan of it too much. The film breath sort of, uh, how do you say, breathes. That's a simple way to put it. You could see the, uh, the shift in color in and out, the shift in exposure in and out. I, I'm not a fan of that, so let's keep that disabled for now. And then the gate weave, I have it, the period at three, translation at the x-axis at 10, translation on the y-axis at 10, rotation at five, and impact 100. Let's see what that looks like enabled. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that either, but some people are. It all depends on your taste. Okay, now, false color, I, uh, I typically don't play with that too much. Output, I leave the total impact at 100. And uh, as for the LUT generator, if you're happy with the color grade, you can export a LUT to your, uh, to your camera or uh, your external monitor just so you have a better feel of what the uh, final footage would look like so you could expose properly. I highly, highly recommend that. All 
All right, so we have the same exact settings with both of the versions, 5.3.2 and 6.0.0. What do you think? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As for me, I could see a clear difference in the color grades. While these levels are exactly the same, version 5.3.2 tends to lean towards more of a uh, yellowish tint, a little bit warmer tint, while version 6.0.0 .0 is more of a, a bluish hue, cooler, more neutral image. Now, which one is my favorite? I love them both depending on the situation. I'm noticing though with version 6.0.0 .0, there is a tiny bit more detail but again it's very small and it all depends on your taste. But right off the bat you can see the clear difference in the color temperature and in the hue. I love them both, honestly. Depending on the situation, I think it's good to have both versions. While the version 6.0.0 .0 looks very up to date, extremely modern, Sometimes you want to go for that more retro filmic look and I recommend the previous version 5.3.2 I have both versions and I think it's important to have both so you have them at your disposal depending on the project All right Let me know what you guys think Anyways guys, that's my time I hope you enjoyed the review and the tutorial. And if you're interested in purchasing Dehancer yourself, be sure to use my promo code CP Cinema for 10% off. Thank you for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and more updates. And I'll see you on the next one.